Last October, the anonymous street artist known as Banksy pulled off one of the most audacious stunts in art history. His famed piece, Girl with Balloon, partially self-destructed during auction, right after it sold for more than a million dollars. But although graffiti and street art have secured their positions at auction houses, galleries and museums, such practices are still considered illegal in many cities around the world. Recently, Shifi McFly, who calls himself a visual artist, was arrested in Detroit for suspected vandalism while he was working on a mural commissioned by the city. That's cause, at the time, he didn't have his city-issued permit with him. Drawing the line between street art and graffiti can be hard sometimes, but the most obvious distinction is that street art is commissioned and graffiti is illegal. While cities have spent a lot of time, money and effort on removing what they consider as vandalism, places known for their graffiti have become popular tourist attractions. Another struggle for street artists are their intellectual property rights. Some of them have sued big brands for using their works without permission, while the companies argue if the work is illegal, there are no copyright protections for the artists. Graffiti has come a long way since its inception in the 1960s. It's made its way to being considered as street art and also a force to be reckoned within the legitimate art world. But it's perhaps better off being banned, so it can still represent a form of rebellion it's synonymous with. Now, to talk about the state of street art and graffiti today, let's bring in Susan Hansen, a senior lecturer at Middlesex University. Hi, Susan, good to have you on our show today. So, street art is currently Thanks. very, very popular around the world, but many institutions uh, sort of are resisting against acknowledging it as a proper art form. Why is that? Well, it's a strange thing, isn't it? It's just at the moment when um, street art achieves such popularity, art institutions aren't so keen on including it in the academy. There was a, a recent poll here in the UK that showed that Banksy is now the people's uh, favourite painter or artist of all time, above da Vinci, uh, above Monet, above Rembrandt. Uh, but the way that the art world reacted to this poll was, was with dismay and derision. Uh, as if uh, this was kind of shamefully unsophisticated of the people. But it's, it's, it's growing in popularity. There are now over 150 street art festivals in the world. Uh, New Art, the world's oldest street festival, is now 20 years old. It's uh, hopefully uh, going to break into the art world soon. And do you think uh, graffiti should or could ever be legalized? Because many believe that illegality is its, it's great as handicap, but also a big asset to graffiti artists, what do you think? Um, well, I mean, some people argue that the, the idea that street art or graffiti was produced illegally is what gives it a uh, phenomenology of risk or a sense for the viewer uh, that the artist or the graffiti writer took some risks in producing uh, that work. So that, that's part of the experience of viewing street art and graffiti often. And another hot topic, of course, for street art world is the removal of um, street art from walls for private auctions without the permission of the artist or the lo local community. Um, it is very controversial, but legal, I think. What is your take on it? Well, if, if the wall owner gives permission uh, for work that's been painted on their walls uh, to be chopped off that wall and removed for private auction, uh, that is entirely legal. Uh, however, the communities where the street art is based often protest at this because they see uh, street art as belonging to them, as belonging to the community space. So they see it as a form of theft uh, when this occurs. Actually, you raise a good point. To whom th does the street art belong? And this brings me to copyright protection for uh, graffiti and street art. I mean, do you think it's compatible with street art's essence? It, it, it's certainly possible now. Uh, there's recently a handbook of uh, copyright in graffiti in street art just uh, produced by legal scholar Enrico Bernardio and uh, artists are increasingly appealing uh, to copyright in an attempt to protect their work. 
Uh, however, some people argue that uh, copyright is antithetical to the subversive um, essence of street art and graffiti. Uh, so philosophers like Andrea Baldini argue that um, this may even lead to the death uh, of this art form because it means that we are then commodifying uh, and, and, and absorbing into mainstream art and essentially subversive art form. And do you agree with that? Do I? Oh. Um, on a good day, yes. <laughs> I'm not a copyright scholar, so I, I'm more interested in the ways in which people are, are using these arguments or resisting these arguments. I, I'm, I'm more of a, an historian and an observer of, of popular culture. I mean, I know we mentioned uh, how institutions are resisting against um, acknowledging street art as a proper art form in the beginning, but also there are a lot of street artists and graffiti artists exhibiting within the white cube, really. So I wonder whether you think street art is getting more and more commodified these days. Oh, absolutely. I mean, a lot of so-called uh, street art festivals are now essentially uh, mural festivals. Uh, with, with gigantic murals that have very little uh, to do with uh, what Javier Abaca calls human scale work on the street that's produced as a gift to the community uh, for free and it's intended to engage people and to spark creative energy in people. Uh, the, there is a danger of it being uh, commodified and, and co-opted by the mainstream art world and of moving further and further away uh, from its original uh, roots in the illicit production of work on the street. Well, street art and graffiti, they're definitely evolving, but we'll see in which direction. Thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. Th thanks for the invitation.